This video is about the B-Link innovative Android device. Now this one is going to be running a server client media center. So this is it right here. And it's very innovative because it has an base for two internal hard drives similar to this Synology NAS and this one bay Western Digital Network storage device. So that's what this is going to be about. This one is conducive to a server client hardware. Okay, I got it installed. And if you look, it says stop server or open in browser. So let's go ahead and open the up in the browser. Okay, that's what the settings look like when you open it up. Uh, and that's what the screen looks like after you've added some uh, files. Now the advantage of this device, it's got two internal hard drive bays. Each bay can support up to 16 terabytes for a total of 32 terabytes. That is a lot of storage for your media. Now the media that you're going to get, it's either from over the air or excuse me, any uh, DVR or from uh, ripping your own media. So that's where you get that from. Now one thing that I have to tell you, this is not a streaming device. It does not stream uh, Netflix in 4K or 1080p for that matter, nor does it uh, stream into the, any of the other uh, ser uh, services. So that's what it is not. However, it does stream uh, YouTube in 4K, so that works okay. Now there are some limitations using this as a server, as an MB server. Uh, it cannot multitask. In other words, I can set up some TV recordings, but if I do that, uh, then it might uh, slow down some of the other operations. So it cannot multitask. Okay, if you notice, I'm using my Vorky. That is my primary uh, MB server that I've been using for a very long time. So let's go ahead and switch it to this particular one. Okay, we'll go to GS King. That's what I called it. I run several servers for testing different stuff. Anyway, that's what that one looks like. Okay, let's see what live TV looks like. Okay, I can select it there. Or... I just go down and select it. Now I've got it toward the bottom here, but you can move it wherever position you want. And that's what's on right now. So we go back up here and click on that one. Again, live TV. Now let's go over to uh, schedule. Let's see what we got scheduled. Okay, these are the ones it's going to. Uh, record coming up and I don't have that many scheduled so far on this particular device so let's check them out okay we've got American Experience scheduled Happy Days The Untouchables and Wipeout that's the only thing we've got scheduled to record at this point in time well, let's take Happy Days okay now we will be recording all of those here are some results And of course, you've got these continue watching. Now, that's the thing about the server. You can uh, watch uh, any of these movies anywhere on your home network. Actually, anywhere out of your network also. So you can watch your uh, movies, you can watch your TV shows, or anything from this server on any device on your network. So you're not, you're not confined strictly to this one device using this MB server. Okay, what I mean, if I'm sitting here in the living room watching the conspiracy theory, and I've watched about 20 or 30 minutes of it, and I decide to go in the bedroom and watch it on another TV, and turn on the app, and bring up the uh, MB app, and I can continue watching where I left off in here. So that's the advantage of having a server. Another advantage, if I'm in uh, California, thousands of miles away from home 
and I want to watch it, I can pick up my cell phone and sit there and watch it while I'm in transit or wherever. So it works great no matter where you're at. That's because it is a server. Now the movie section, that's uh, movies that I have ripped from my DVDs, my Blu-rays, and my 4K discs. So those are the ones that I've ripped. Plus there's a lot of uh, movies that I've uh, recorded from over the air antenna using my HD home run tuners. So those are all those. Now there's one problem that uh, this device struggles playing Back to the Future that's recorded in uh, VC1, which is a Microsoft codec. I guess they originally came out for the Xbox. But anyway, all M logic devices, not this one, just this one in particular, but the Mi Boxes, the uh, TiVo Stream 4K, they all suffer from the same thing. They cannot natively play the VC1 codec, so they have to be transcoded. Now that's where the problem come in. The, C, the central processing unit, the CPU on this device, is not powerful enough to transcode that uh, video and play it properly. So it has to be transcoded and this device does not have the power to do this. So it will not transcode or play any device that's uh, encoded in the VC1 codec. Now this particular one, that is a DVD rip from years ago, and that is a 480p. That plays perfectly. No issues there. So those are the uh, DVD recordings that I ripped. No, rec no issues there. Now the equalizer, that is a 1080p H.264 codec, and that is uh, running the DTS audio. Now this device does not pass through the HD, audio co uh, the HD codecs. Like that with a DTS HDMA Master Audio, it will not pass through that. So it will not do that. So you have to play the DTS 5.1. This device also struggles with the uh, English PGS, PGS subs. Now that has to require transcoding because this device does not natively handle those type of subtitles. Now again, this is a 4K video, the Independence Day. Now that plays perfectly. It, it direct plays on that. Again, it will not play DTS HD audio. It has to play in DTS because it, it struggles trying to transcode that. So that's uh, one of the issues there. So pretty much it plays everything that you can throw at it except for those VC1 codecs. And I do have several... Uh, 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 encode, uh, several movies that is encoded in that VC1, so they have to be transcoded uh, if you want to play them, or uh, it struggles. Okay, the next heading is TV shows. Now again, these are all recordings from my uh, antenna on the roof. Again, it plays these all perfectly, so no issues there at all. Season, unknown season. Now the thing about the Untouchables, when they first uh, started broadcasting them two or three weeks ago, they did not put any season or episode information, so they just throw them out there and said uh, uh, Untouchable. So that's an issue on that. But if we go to, let's say, uh, Lost in Space, well there's only two there, 21 there. Okay, let's go down to that one, season one. Now again, these are the recordings that uh, I grabbed off the antenna off the roof. And it gives you the, the cast more like this. So this is a very slick server, very slick uh, system. So um, is it worth it? Well, that's a tough question to answer. Is it worth it? I guess if I was just starting out, this would be well worth it for me because besides the network storage devices that I already have, I've also got uh, three or four different external hard drives that I got plugged into different devices scattered all over my network and are located all throughout the house. So, Yes, this would consolidate everything, and I may end up doing that and buying it. I put a total of 32 terabytes inside this device. So, yes, to me, it would be well worth it. 
Now, B-Link created this box to be a file server, and their motivation was to have a storage device for all your recordings and pictures and stuff that you have on your cellular phone, uh, a place to say, uh, for safekeeping. Well, this is what it does. It uses a file server. By creating this file server on this device, you can access it from any device on your network. So you've got your uh, cellular phones, you can copy your uh, pictures, your video clips that you take, everything on this storage. So you have a permanent storage, you won't lose it. Also, you can access it from any Windows computer. So it's a, that's why they created it.